Hello, my name is Sebastian Mais. I'm a former PhD student of Brian Spears, and I'm now working in Germany in a consultancy specialized in aquatic plant ecology and management. And in this session, in session number three, I'm going to talk about the responses following disruption of internal phosphorus loading using phoslock in shallow lakes. First, I will give a brief description of the study site of Flemington, and then I will outline the chemical and ecological responses that have been observed during the study. And then I'm going to highlight some future research requirements, and in particular, the problem of calculating effective dose. Loch Flemington is uh, located in the north of Scotland. It's quite a small shallow lake. It has an area of 15 hectare and a mean and maximum depth of one and three meter. It has one inflow and no outflow, which means that phosphorus which enters the lake is trapped inside the lake. And the lake has a common history of eutrophication problems like many other lakes. So in the past, mainly high external load of phosphorus was a problem. This has been tackled by catchment management and um, the upgrade of sewage treatment works. And following this, um, internal loading was the main problem. So the concept of this project and the concept of um, the underlying concept of lake restoration in shallow lakes is that um, shallow lakes can exist, at least in theory, in two different stable states. Uh, one is a phytoplankton-dominated state, and one is a macrophyte-dominated state. And both states are stabilized by various feedback mechanisms. And in the phytoplankton-dominated state, in particular, the release of phosphorus from the sediment into the water column um, fuels the growth of phytoplankton. Phytoplankton shades out uh, macrophytes, and after phytoplankton uh, dies and decays, um, it settles to the sediment bed, where it is um, remineralized so that the cycle can start again. And in picture B and C is basically the approach of using pea capping agents in lake restoration projects shown. Um, they work in two steps. In step one, phosphorus, dissolved phosphorus in the water column is bound by those products um, when they settle uh, through the water column. Once they have settled to the sediment bed, they act to reduce sediment phosphorus release. Therefore, less phosphorus is available for the growth of phytoplankton. Um, water clarity increases and macrophytes can cover larger areas of the sediment bed. And macrophytes act, or benthic algae, both act as natural feedback mechanisms that uh, minimize or reduce the release of phosphorus from the sediment to the water column. And this is basically the idea behind um, using pea capping agents that um, they are used to give macrophytes the width of opportunity to establish and cover larger areas of the sediment bed. In the case of Loch Flemington, um, which was monitored 10 months prior to the application in March 2010, um, where 25 tons of phospholog were applied. Um, and this, to put this into context, this is quite a low dose because this mass of phospholog was sufficient um, to control the mass of potentially really release sensitive phosphorus in the top two centimeters of the sediment only. And when I'm going to speak about chemical responses, I'm mainly focusing on changes in the sediment, i.e. changes in sediment, sediment composition or changes in the mass of phosphorus that can be released from the sediment into the water column. And after that, I'm going to have a look if this translates also into phosphorus concentrations in the water column. So first of all, the question, how does sediment elemental composition changes after the application of phospholog? Um, on the y-axis, you can see sediment depths, and uh, I took sediment cores and sliced them. And what you can see on the x-axis is the mass of lanthanum in the sediment, and the gray bars show 
the situation prior to the application. So we are in, in year 2009, in summer, um, represented by July, and autumn, represented by October. So there was lanthanum in the sediment already prior to the application. And because Foslock is a lanthanum modified bentonite clay, um, we expected that the sediment lanthanum content would increase after the application, which we could show. In the white bars, you can see the results in July and October after the application, showing that there was a significant increase in the sediment lanthanum content. And importantly, there was also no change in other elements, uh, in the mass of other elements in the sediment, like aluminium, iron, calcium, or manganese, um, which are also related or involved into cycling of phosphorus between the sediment and the water column. So the hypothesis taken from this was that we would expect an increase. So we would expect after this increase in the sediment phosphorus binding capacity by this increased mass of lanthanum in the sediment, we would expect a reduction of phosphorus release from the sediment into the water column. And therefore we had a look at the mass of phosphorus in the sediment that can potentially be released. So this graph is similar, but it shows, so you can see on the y-axis the sediment depths, and in gray again the situation prior to the application, and in white the white bars show the situation post-application. And on the x-axis you can see the mass of potentially really sensitive phosphorus in the sediment, and we observed that there was a significant uh, lower P mobile content seven months after the application of Phoslog. But this also highlighted that phosphorus isn't immediately bound once phospholog is applied. It's more likely that phosphorus that is released from other sediment phosphorus fractions, um, which comes into contact with lanthanum, is then bound by lanthanum. And then we were interested to see if this is also translated into the concentrations in the, the phosphorus concentrations in the water column. So you see here on the on the x-axis you can see the time, on the y-axis you see the total phosphorus concentration, and if you focus on the year 2009 prior to the application, we had um, the highest phosphorus concentrations in summer, and this seasonality of high concentrations in summer is quite um, typical for lakes suffering, for shallow lakes suffering from internal phosphorus loading. Then you can see the dashed. Uh, line which shows the, phos the timing of the phospholog application. And following the application, we had significantly lower phosphorus concentrations in the water column, particularly in summer. And to put this into context, um, although the Loch Flemington is too small to be considered under the Water Framework Directive, um, if we would apply for this lake type, the Water Framework Directive targets, um, of 32 micrograms per liter, the lake would fail in 2009 and would pass the target in the first and second year after the application. Then we were interested, what are the ecological responses following the application of phosphor in Flemington? And here you can see the situation prior to the application. This is summer 2009, where we had a um, phytoplankton bloom, which was dominated by cyanobacteria. And the graph on the left-hand side shows on the y-axis the biovolume of cyanobacteria. And again, after the phospholog application, we saw a significant drop in, in the abundance of cyanobacteria. But interestingly, if you look on the, on the right-hand side, on the, on the pie charts, um, the community composition didn't change immediately. So in the first year, 2010, the community was uh, dominated by cyanobacteria, and only in the second year after the application, we saw changes in the community composition appear. And because the application caused a reduction in total phytoplankton biomass, we had an increase in water clarity, and as I outlined uh, before, this may favor macrophytes to colonize larger areas and also deeper areas of, uh, of the lake bed. Uh, we monitored also macrophytes, and a colleague Ian Gunn, he wrote a paper showing that the maximum colonization depths of macrophytes increased after the application. 
and also that the area covered by aquatic plants um, increased. However, the community composition didn't change. So um, the lake was still dominated by Elodea canadensis. So from this research, um, I summed up some research questions for the future, which are all around the problem of calculating effective dose when using pea capping agents in restoration projects. And this graph gives you just an overview about the doses of phospholog that are applied in whole lake studies. In red, you can see Loch Flemington, where around two tons of phospholog were applied per hectare. Um, this is roughly in the middle. You can see applications in Germany, which are more than six tons per hectare. So the question is how to calculate an effective dose which can be used to achieve site-specific water quality targets. The problem with this is that internal phosphorus loading is type variable. So it's variable once in space and one in time, once in time. Um, on the left hand side you can see this is just a scheme showing the exchange of phosphorus between different sediment phosphorus fractions. Uh, depending on the environmental conditions, which can vary in a lake, depending on where you sample, and also um, depending on the time sample. The next important question is, what is the active sediment depth that should be considered when calculating those? And active sediment depth means the depths um, from which phosphorus is released from the sediment into the water column. There are some rough guidelines uh, by thumb authors um, saying or suggesting the top four centimeters are often important or the top 10 centimeters. However, this is also quite likely to vary spatially and temporally, and it is also very likely to be a site specific um, depth because at each site, different physical chemical conditions and biological factors affect this active sediment depth. So, overall, there's large uncertainty in estimating P-mobile at the whole lake scale, which means there's large uncertainty in estimating those at the whole lake scale. To make it more complicated, there are some discussions going on about using high or low doses or using single or multiple doses. So far, there are some evidence that there are non-target effects when high doses are applied. For example, high doses can affect um, the sediment oxygen profiles and the sediment oxygen concentrations. And also high doses may, or they do influence nitrification and denitrification processes, which is particularly important for lakes which are N or NNP co-limited. Furthermore, there are studies showing that using P-capping agents, it might be um, beneficial to use multiple smaller doses. For example, Lewandowski et al. They did an experiment uh, showing that the uh, pea capping layer that is buried under fresh sediment had little or no effect on sediment phosphorus release from this newly um, sedimented layer. And furthermore, the pea absorption capacity of the pea capping agents might change over time. And um, I think the, the most crucial bit is that the role of feedback mechanisms acting in whole lake systems, um, we have so far, it's very hard to get a handle how to translate this into calculating dose. So for example, in Loch Flemington, where low dose was applied, um, we saw sediment phosphorus release decreasing, we saw that phytoplankton biomass decreased, uh, we measured an increase in water clarity and also an increase in macrophyte growing depths. So the question appears, was the sediment phosphorus release further buffered by macrophytes, which act as a positive feedback mechanism, and then how to translate this into those calculations. So to sum this up, there are non-target effects at high dose. They uh, potential advantages in adding multiple smaller doses. However, the role of feedback mechanisms is largely understudied. Therefore, there's large uncertainties involved in calculating effective dose 
for lake restoration projects using pea capping agents. And one potential way to um, come to terms with this is to um, use data from various case studies and looking at those response relationships to get a handle on some of these questions. Thank you very much.